everyone veteran diplomat lakshmi murdeshwar puri has written her first book well it doesn't really talk about her own life journey in which she has broken many a glass ceilings but this one is a fiction it is called swallowing the sun we are in conversation with the author ma'am thank you so much for speaking to ndtv wonderful to be here with you maria ma'am before we get into the title of the book and perhaps that will be the last question that i am going to ask let me begin with a fiction which is coming at a time where india and the world will be witnessing what will be seen as a reclaiming of civilizational glory with the consecration of the ram temple on 22nd your book is also about that reclamation uh the timing many would say that you have timed it with 22nd of january well it is serendipity i would say that it has come out at this time and yes it celebrates it explores young people's uh reclaiming of their civilizational heritage its richness its depth its variety and its many splendored beauty hmm. and that and the spiritual heritage as well so all of that is certainly uh at that time when we were striving at the same time, at the at the same moment for india's freedom freedom from colonial rule the civilizational reclaiming was one or you know to move the boat towards freedom because it was a freedom from the colonialism of the mind that was being attempted at that time uh, by these young characters in my uh, novel uh, and the same thing is happening 75 more than 75 years later when there is an attempt also to reclaim that heritage to also in many ways reinvent it and bring it to the world and claim our place in the world so all of that is certainly uh, evocative the novel is evocative of what's happening now and what's happening now brings back memories yes. that are embedded in this novel yes because if you go through the chapters and i have gone through some of them you certainly feel that because i went to ayodhya i saw those uh, you know palpable energy there and that energy is reflected through very strong women characters your book is being said that it will be remembered as one of the most powerful novels of the 21st uh, century why do you think it is being said this way well i'm very pleased that it is being said uh that it is uh a powerful novel it's the broad sweep of this novel not only in terms of the years it covers the eventful years the most tumultuous period in indian history in the 20th century and it's also about the themes the powerful themes it explores and it dives into uh deep dives into um they include um of course the self the theme of self realization that every human being seeks to realize his or who his or her own potential um of of everyone being having the potential and being able to break boundaries to attain the unattainable and that is the title of the book swallowing the sun uh and it is based on mukta bai a 13th century saint's um abhanga a devotional verse which basically lists a number of miracles including a little ant daring to fly into the sky and swallowing the sun so anything is possible the can do spirit of that time uh which young people were fired by i wanted to capture that 
and again bring it to the front. The other is the freedom struggle itself. Uh, the nature of the freedom struggle, the different characters, the heroes there and the characters in my novel who are no less just because they are not Mahatma Gandhi or Jawaharlal Nehru or, or Ambedkar or, or Veer Savarkar. But they are admirers of them. They also live in that space and try to contribute uh, in their own way uh, to the freedom struggle. So that whole canvas, again, uh, it's, a, it's a huge uh, cast of characters, an epic saga. Yes. So in so many ways, it's a coming of age yes. novel. It's a feminist statement uh, in all its uh, glorious dimensions. And uh, so it, I, I do uh, think that we have also covered uh, its poetic. Uh, it's also evocative of a very particular cultural renaissance that was happening at that time, literary renaissance, poetic uh, renaissance, theater in Maharashtra. So all these elements make it crackle with uh, beauty and joy. And uh, since you are a Maharashtrian, correct me, it, many would say that it is, it is a domain of your choice and liking, but uh, let me get into some paragraphs which are very, very fascinating, among others. You go on to talk about, you know, Malti was the Sutradhar, holding the dance drama together. As Champatai uh, explained, Sutra Dharayati, Yaha Saha Sutradhar, the one who holds the strings is the puppeteer, like the great puppeteer above. So who is the puppeteer? You would be clearly the puppeteer of all these characters. Well, many people have asked me, since this novel is based or inspired, I would say inspired by uh, my parents' story, uh, why didn't I write a biography? Uh, the very reason was that I wanted to be the grand puppeteer, creating and the creator. Uh, and. Uh, since you have been talking about Ram, uh, you know, there is, I heard this uh, uh, bhajan, uh, Ram tum srushta bhi ho or srishti bhi ho, drishta bhi ho or drishti bhi ho. So a novelist, and that's why I wanted to write a novel, a novelist is one who is a creator, but he is also drawing upon his own uh, status as a, create creature of, of God. And then uh, you, you are also seeing, but you are also being seen. So it is that magic hmm. of uh, creation that I wanted to capture in this. But just to uh, also refer to this, you, you picked this very interesting point. I was uh, intrigued by it because initially I wanted the title of this book to be Dancing with the Puppeteer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I even had a prologue, so I had to drop it later. But, uh, you know, it, it's really about fate and will. And faith. F fate, faith and will. So to what extent human beings control their lives? To what extent the, by the flick of the hands of a puppeteer, your life just takes a different turn. And that's how uh, the characters here also experience and, you know, try to mold their destiny as much as possible. And then they are uh, thwarted or they are rewarded. So I just want, you know, it's, it's one of the very... Um, I would say another theme uh, of this uh, novel about how uh, individuals are extraordinary in so many ways because they don't just, they are not fatalistic. They try to take their uh, fate into their own hands and yet when 
you know, when uh, there is um, um, adversity and something changes, they bounce back and they are resilient. But sometimes it's, there is tragedy. So that's life. And that's why the, the connection with the puppeteer, the sutradhar, and someone holding. And it's also about power relations. Who is the sutradhar of your life? And if you look at the feminism uh, theme, uh, to what extent are women controlled by the men in their families or in society? So that's also an exploration. Yes, you have weaved in a lot of ideas here, but just look at the sheer number, I would say, of women characters. You have a Malati, you have a Kamala, Surekha, Sarala, Ma Saheb, Hema Kaki, Chandra, uh, Mai, Kashi. It's a huge list in comparison to, I mean, you have men as well. I would not say you don't have Mohan Kaka and others. There are quite a list. Uh, so it's a feminist novel or would you say that it's exploring feminism in its new form? I would say the latter. I think both are true in many ways. But as I said, it's a multi-genre uh, novel. As I explained, it's a historical fiction. It's a contemporary fiction. It's as relevant today. And uh, any young person will resonate to it. Uh, it's um, uh, also uh, in, in many ways based on a family saga. So uh, it's all of that, but it's also very much at its soul uh, a feminist offering. And in that sense, what uh, is important is to highlight that the women characters are uh, all those that seek to be the ants that fly into the sky out of their, the, the, the bounds of their breaking circumstances. Breaking away from puppeteers. Breaking away from puppeteers. Mm -hmm. um, and from the enslavement of power as, as there's one or two, three chapters on that as you know. So that is happening. But also the men characters I have uh, also shown how men characters have played an important role in their uh, self-seeking and, and, and self-realization. And that is something uh, I think that is new uh, about this, that it is showing men as feminist hmm. characters. The Baba, hmm. the father who really drives them out of the traditional mold of child marriage, child motherhood, into education and, and uh, careers. So that is one. And also Guru as one of the most uh, empathetic lovers and then husband. So he for, in fact defies yes. her. So basically for all those who are thinking about these names, they have to read this book to decode what uh, uh, Lakshmi Puri is talking about. I'm going to go to another paragraph. This is about Bhul Bhulaya, where uh, you talk about, you know, Kamla, Shaila, Chandra and others, all of them going through this test. And then you say, once there, she finally found the undistracted time to go into herself, to seek her worldly and spiritual purpose. She chanted Om, disclosed her desires and sought direction. And then she is in that bulbalaya and she is giving a sigh of relief and all of them are going through this test. You know, so this is about purposefulness, which we keep talking about and also combining it with mindfulness. Uh, what made you create so many characters? So, uh, first to the bulbalaya. That was to show that we all live in some kind of a centered world. So the center of my world or your world, each is, you know, self-determined, but we are not conscious always. So this is really a philosophical kind of, uh, 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 you know, journey that the headmistress, Ma, uh, Maji, makes them take uh, so that when they are, they are about to graduate, so, and they are young women pioneer graduates from, from school. So she's wanting them to really 
go within themselves like in a labyrinth you go inside again and again to the center without even realizing that you are doing it um, and and the labyrinth has a particular meaning even in hindu um, uh, philosophy so the idea is discover your purpose meditate as you go through that labyrinth and i described the labyrinth how she feels distracted mm. at times uh, by the brahmini bird yes. who's uh, of course very uh, sweetly singing um, from the nearby temple uh, but also put um, you know somewhat uh, uh, put off by the crow that is uh, caw cawing and then also the kamini bushes the flowers the scent of those flowers and then the bees that they attract she is almost stung by so in life as you seek your purpose and navigate the uh, paths of the labyrinth surrounded by the walls you stop to uh, you must stop to to take stock of where you are and where you should be going and also shut out the distractions you know the the serpents and then i also talk about sometimes as we are walking we as, as she is walking she is comforted by the footfall of people around but also you know deterred by the snakes slithering through or being for, forewarned of dangers by unseen voices from the future and yet feeling very uh, confident about going forward so you know these are the emotions as you experience in your self discovery but also attainment of your purpose as you go on in life let me take you back to the time period that you have chosen 50 years and this is around the freedom movement uh for someone like you who has traveled the world you could have chosen contemporary india modern times but you choose a particular era what made you do that that's because maria i was born to my parents when they were 45 and so i was they were you know two generations in many ways older than me and so when i used to interact with them i used to find that world fascinating they were uh, people who lived poetry who spoke in poetic language whether it's greek mythology whether it is hindu mythology whether it is sanskrit marathi uh, english so in it was a very uh, literary world that they uh, inhabited and generated around me so and passed on to and passed on to me so i wanted to recreate that world and the extraordinary journey the other thing is that you know the freedom movement why did i want to write about it because i was asked by a young interviewer um, you know we young people now 75 years later we don't even even remember it so i said precisely so lest we forget we do need to remember how difficult it was what it was to be young at that time when you were enslaved and with what great sacrifice freedom was won how precious it is and also how this 75 years later is the time when we reinvent ourselves in a different way and move to our 100th our tryst another tryst with destiny uh you know in 2047 so that kind of um uh, uh, construct was also certainly in my mind uh and uh, it's always i'm a student of history so you know that also explains why i go back and dip into the would past you, you to learn that? for the present and to um, dream of the future instances in this novel where women are shown to be uh, not just uh, objects of the narrative mm. 
but the subjects of the narrative. They are in many ways also taking control of them. Control of their lives, trying to, in fact, determine the path of their lives. And that's also very much reflection of 21st century women. Absolutely. And that's where we should be going. And I think my uh, stint at uh, yes. the UN uh, Women, UN women mm -hmm. uh, certainly told me that when you tell stories, that's the best way of sending messages and bringing about mindset change, which is what is required if we are to achieve gender equality and women's empowerment. There is this very interesting uh, slogan, which is like a slogan which we keep hearing about, which is Bharat Mata Ki Jai. But you talk about it in the context of a play which is happening, and I'm going to read your paragraph here. It says, know that this is not just any play we are staging. It's our offering to Mother India's freedom to awaken Western educated Indian youth in our college and beyond as you talk about it, to contribute to it in whichever way they can through their ideas, writings, and uh, activities uh, without in any way endangering our studies, the completion of which is an important offering in itself. We will spawn action groups to support the Gandhi-led freedom movement. Then there was a chorus of Bharat Mata Ki Jai. The times that we are living in is that this Bharat Mata or Mother India is now also about Jai Shri Ram. These are slogans which have almost merged into each other. You have characters who are very conscious of their spiritual identity. They are conscious Hindus. At the same time, they are conscious as citizens of India. Something that we are seeing again in current times. Mm -hmm. How did you paint it? Well, you know, this is uh, one of the first activities that Guru and Malti and these young people in Elphinstone College undertake to demonstrate their patriotism. There are different ways of demonstrating what you can do for your country. And one of the first activities they undertake is this, that they stage a play by Mama Varerkar. Uh, he was one of the great playwrights uh, of those times, part of the literary renaissance that I talked about. And it has a very strong message, patriotic message, uh, but of course, delivered in a very um, a camouflaged way so that they are allowed to stage the play. And, uh, and then that evokes amongst the youth an awareness of the Satyagraha movement, an awareness that they have to also contribute, that they cannot be isolated from the sea uh, of, of uh, uh, protest and, and um, the mass movement that was swirling around them. So that is something that is sought to be evoked here. And at the same time, when that play ends, in fact, if you go further, you will see the play ends and there is a chorus of Maharat Mata Ki Jai, uh, Jai Hind and all that. So the British authorities, then call Guru and others and threaten them with suspension and ask them, how did this happen? And Mama Varirkar also gives a speech, although very much, uh, uh, very again, very tactful, but the message is clear to anyone. So that was the first. And then it goes on to other actions, including uh, participating and being lati charged at the Simon Commission protests that were held in 1928. So there are a series of actions that they, they, they do uh, participate in and you know, and which they see as a badge of honor to uh, at that time freeing the country from uh, uh, British rule. But at the same time, there is, as I said, simultaneously, uh, it, all of this is very much driven by a consciousness about their identity. Hmm. Who am I hmm. in this ocean of, uh, uh, you know, India's uh, freedom struggle is also helping them to discover 
who they are and what is India, the idea of India. And that is what it is all about. Each discovering, redefining, reinventing the idea of India through various means, whether it is spiritual, religious, uh, and, and uh, in many ways, uh, you know, the, the also syncretic way. You have inspired several women and uh, because you wanted to relate to the current generation, you could have told your own story. Uh, I think, as I explained to you, I wanted to have a certain distance from uh, the, the crea creation, my creation. I wanted to have a certain distance and be a creator. It may, I wanted it to be an act of creation, not uh, 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 just an uh, act of narration, which a biography is or an autobiography is. And uh, I would very much be looking to have some sequels. Uh, yes, I wanted to ask you, that was my next question. <laughs> so maybe my generation, my daughter's generation, my granddaughter's generation, yes, original idea was to have all these three generations covered. But anyway, so that, that was, uh, but I did, I, I wanted to really uh, tell this story and not one story. These are so many stories within stories as you have seen and uh, so many characters who uh, mean so much in terms of the impact and the messages they give. But you know when you write fiction, it's much more powerful than when uh, you convey messages uh, as, as propaganda or when you go uh, and, and advocate uh, as, as um, you know, and, and build movement, you know. So the stories are the best way of uh, making an impact on the, on the causes that, you are, that are dear to you. Let's end with a, a popular poetry or, or something that you wish to quote. Oh, Madhu Malti. Let this beguiling wail once and for all be pierced and fall between the manifest and the truth, between the striving and the attainment, between the worshipper and the worshipped, between me and you. On that note, let's end this conversation. Lakshmi Mundeshwar Puri, pleasure speaking to you, ma'am. Pleasure speaking to you too and thank you for unveiling this book to your viewers and potential readers. Thank you so much.